Hi all, today we're going to be taking a look at the GHK AK, looking at the internal systems of the GHK and understanding not just how to disassemble or reassemble this rifle, but also understanding how the different systems inside work together. So let's go ahead and start by taking off our dust cover. And we will return to the gas system and the recoil guide rod and such, but for now let's go ahead and remove that and the buffer. This video is going to cover three main areas. First, the fire control group and how each individual part within the fire control group works together. The gas system, namely how the nozzle functions in relation to the magazine and the fire control group. And then lastly, common issues that individuals encounter and how to troubleshoot those. So let's go ahead and get started with our fire control group. We can see here a few key components. We're going to start from the rear and move to the front. We have our selector lever. We have the trigger unit. We have our disconnector, which is seated right here in the middle of our trigger unit. We have the hammer, which is currently captured by that trigger unit. We have the firing pin, which travels in a slot right here in the middle of the hammer. We have our magazine cutoff switch, and then we have our auto sear over here on the right side of the gun. So let's go back and start over here. Our safety lever works as a paddle and it works to capture both the trigger as well as the disconnector. So currently when we're in safe, we can see that pulling that trigger, neither the trigger unit or the disconnector can move. When we transition to fully auto, and for this, I'm going to go ahead and put our bolt system in place and then remove it when we move up to our auto sear and such. When we've transitioned to fully auto, we can see that pulling the trigger allows just the trigger mechanism to move and our disconnector is still captured. This is held captive by that selector lever. Moving into semi-auto, we can see that that whole unit is allowed to move. There is a small spring underneath this disconnector that pushes up and makes sure that when we're in auto or when we're in safe, it is held captive there, but particularly in auto. When the rifle is set to auto, these catch points at the front of our trigger assembly are the only points that catch our hammer. We can see when the hammer returns, it is held captive by those, and when the trigger is pulled, it is released. So, in fully automatic fire, if the trigger is held down, the bolt, as it reciprocates, the hammer will continue firing. It is only when that trigger is released that the hammer will be held captive. Moving into semi-auto fire, we can see that that disconnector is released. And this is where things get interesting. As we fire, the bolt will reciprocate and first be caught by that disconnector and then transitioned from this lip on the disconnector to our trigger unit. So watch here. We can see that it is transitioned from the disconnector to the trigger unit and is ready to fire. So no matter if we have the trigger held down, on semi-automatic, that disconnector is going to stop the hammer from continuing forward as it does in fully automatic fire. So let's do that one more time. We can see that disconnector clicking into place there as we ride that back. 
Let's go ahead and move our bolt carrier group out of the way and go ahead and take a look moving forward. Next we have that hammer assembly. The hammer is a crucial part for the GHK platform as it is what interfaces between our trigger assembly and our firing pin, our magazine cutoff switch, our auto sear, and everything towards the front of the gun. So, this hammer works in the rear by having our two faces on the top and the bottom here that interact with the disconnector and the trigger unit. In the front, we see these two small channels here and our firing pin, which has two notches on either side. This firing pin travels along the ridges on that hammer, allowing it to move forward once the hammer is fully in the upright position, thus actuating our magazine's uh, gas outlet valve, and then retract once the bolt reciprocates. So, I'm going to push the auto sear out of the way here. We can see that as we pull the trigger, that firing pin moves forward with the hammer moving forward. And as the hammer returns from the bolt carrier group moving over the top, we can see that that firing pin is retracted. The hammer also has a couple key roles with our auto sear and with our magazine cutoff valve. So let's take a look first at that uh, with our auto sear and the magazine cutoff valve. Let's go ahead and take a look at the auto sear first. The auto sear works to make sure that our rifle does not fire when it is out of battery. So without a bolt in the gun, if we go ahead and pull the trigger, we can see that the hammer is held captive by that auto sear. There's a small notch right down here on the hammer that that auto sear catches on. When that auto sear is fully forward, as it is when the bolt is fully seated, we can see that when we pull the trigger, that hammer is free to move. But even slightly out of battery, that hammer, even slightly out of battery, that hammer is, generally the auto sear is slightly out of battery is not all the way forward like that. Even slightly out of battery, that auto sear is going to catch that. Let's take a look at how that looks with our bolt carrier group in place. This auto sear serves a crucial role where if we have reciprocated the bolt and we have it fully in place, that will fire. But let's say it doesn't fully seat and you pull the trigger, you can see that that hammer has been released from the trigger assembly, but is still being held captive by the auto sear. This is an area that negligent or accidental discharges uh, occasionally occur with this platform uh, with folks not understanding exactly how this system works. If, let's say, you've had a misfeed or something along that line and this is not fully seated or maybe things are slightly misaligned or there's another issue and this accidentally doesn't fully seat, instead of letting that move all the way forward, you'll want to cock the rifle to the rear to reset that hammer. Because if that hammer is not reset, once it returns to battery, it will instantly fire. Let's go ahead and take a look at that again with our bolt carrier group slightly out of, out of battery. We can see that that hammer is released and it is dropped as soon as that auto sear releases it. So now let's take a look at the last main component in here, our magazine cutoff switch. The magazine cutoff switch interacts with this piece on our magazine. We can see on the magazine that this piece can move up and down 
And when we have rounds in the magazine, we can see that that is allowed to move freely. Once the follower comes up to the top and we have fully ran out of rounds, we can see though that that is forced up, that that has a spring that is pushing it up. There is an option to pull out that little toggle where it is just allowed to move freely. And in those instances, the rifle will not stop firing once you have ran out of rounds. This magazine uh, disconnect switch is a key, uh, a key portion of the rifle to make sure that it stops firing when you have ran out of rounds. Um, so the way that this works is once we have ran out and this is pushing up, that little tab is going to push up on here and it pushes up on it fairly forcefully. And so once the bolt reciprocates that final time, the hammer is going to be held captive by that magazine, uh, magazine switch. And we can see that unlike with the auto sear, when we pull the trigger, the hammer is not released. The hammer is held in place further down. And so pulling the trigger, releasing it, still captures that hammer. The way that this is reset is by charging the bolt with a uh, fresh magazine that will then be reset and the hammer can then be dropped. So now let's take a look at the gas system. When a magazine is inserted into the gun, this firing pin travels forward on those grooves and presses on our outlet valve. That outlet valve then allows gas to flow through the gas router up here at the top of the magazine. That gas router fits flush with our nozzle like so. And so the gas flows from the magazine into the nozzle. Now this is where things get interesting with the nozzle. We can see inside of a GHK nozzle, we have, as with most gas blowbacks, we have a floating valve in there. So if we take a look at this, we can see that that pushes forward and that little lip right there seals the front, this front section. That floating valve is what ensures you have a consistent airflow going down the barrel and only a limited amount of airflow. Uh, this makes it so you don't have a huge amount of gas just pouring out the end of the barrel and allowing for kind of consistency between shots. Once that gas is released through the magazine and up in here, enough gas is released here to seal that valve, this floating valve in here. And once that seals, the remainder of the gas that is released is pushed through the back of this valve and through these holes back here. These holes back here then release that gas into this chamber here, forcing the bolt carrier back, resetting our hammer, resetting our firing pin, and stopping the gas flow into that nozzle. Once the bolt has fully reached the rear, it reciprocates due to the recoil spring and things are ready to start again. We can additionally see when we hold up our bolt here that we are, there is a nozzle stop for our nozzle. So as we go to the rear and hit that buffer that's back here, we can see that even at the max outlet for all the way forward for our nozzle, there's enough room there to hit that buffer, 
and still hit that buffer and still have enough space to cycle another round up into the hop-up chamber, starting the process again. A lot of airsoft guns, a lot of gas blowbacks will have a nozzle return spring. Uh, GHK does not, uh, which is not ideal and not a perfect system. Uh, that nozzle return spring helps make sure that uh, this nozzle goes back to where it's supposed to as the bolt returns to battery. So let's take a look at some common faults, some common issues. Now that we better understand our system, we can kind of look through some common areas of issue. The selector switch on GHK AKs is not ideal. This is a three-part system with the internal section, the external lever, and then this screw here tying those two together. This allows for a little bit of play between the two. And here I, you can see that I am moving that selector lever inside and I'm not adjusting this on the outside. Sometimes this intersection will become stripped or otherwise will uh, become loose. Maybe this is backed out. Maybe your paddle here, uh, your selector lever is not uh, is a little loose. If that is the case, it can often not effectively capture either the disconnector or the trigger resulting in uh, accidental discharges or the rifle firing on semi-automatic even when it's set in automatic mode. Additionally, the disconnector is a common area of issue for two main reasons. First, we can see that this back section of the disconnector is really crucial in that it is captured by that safety lever. GHK does not use the greatest quality metal for its AK internals, and so these disconnectors have a tendency to shear right around this point, basically where we're transitioning from light into shadow there. If that has transitioned, or if that has broken off, the safety cannot capture that disconnector and not hold it in place, and so your rifle will fire in semi-automatic only. This additionally often is an issue if the spring underneath that disconnector has come loose, has broken, or is otherwise having not fully seated as this disconnector needs to have that little bit of tension to it to make sure that it interacts with our safety correctly. Some other common issues are if you have damage to your auto sear, uh, the top lip of this auto sear uh, can shear off, or if you have wear on your hammer, uh, either the notch here or the notch here for your uh, magazine, um, magazine cutoff or for uh, your auto sear. If either of those springs are unseated or not sitting correctly, they also will not push onto your hammer, uh, making sure that it functions correctly. A common issue additionally is folks mixing, uh, mixing components internally. They'll put in a WNS full travel kit, which will include a hammer, and then they'll replace these portions of the rifle, uh, the firing pin, the auto sear, the disconnector, etc., with Hephaestus units or others. These have fairly tight tolerances, and if the bumps, those channels that the firing pin travels on, are too deep, or uh, the firing pin is too long, uh, then uh, you might end up having issues with uh, the firing pin not traveling correctly, or accidentally hanging up, or getting caught up on the uh, magazine magazine's outlet valve, or otherwise causing a negligent discharge. Those issues can be addressed through some careful filing or polishing, but generally it's recommended keep all those parts the same. I hope this has been of help and best of luck in your work on your own GHK AK.